we are coming to now understanding the harmony in the society so the basic aspiration being continuous happiness and prosperity and looking for that or the program for fulfilling that aspiration through the harmony so now going on to harmony in the society if we see really speaking the family is the sort of a training ground for the society so <coughs> what exactly is the society the society is just the larger order after the family so once we have harmony we are able to live with harmony in the family it's just that we are expanding this family to larger and larger and larger unit till there is no boundary and we get to the world family so that is what a society would be so the family is the basic unit or the building block and the society is the next larger order so what is society society has many families living together making effort for a common goal and if you look at the many families it's coming from each an individual person so if we see this and we are asking ourselves what is desirable do we want families to live together in a relationship of mutual fulfillment with a common goal or do we want people living together not in relationship of mutual fulfillment having different goals or is it desirable to have people living separately in opposition or struggle with one another having conflicting goals so in one case you can have a common goal relationship of mutual fulfillment other case there can be different goals there is no mutual fulfillment in relationship third case people are living separately they are not even living together no relationship here there is opposition there is struggle and everybody has very conflicting goals so if we ask ourselves what is desirable and you know we see that this top one we can see right families living together that is what we would call society isn't it somebody with you know differing goals you can think of as a bunch of people together a crowd if they're living in opposition it's more like a battlefield in it we can take the reflection from you here um bhaiya can we have the reflection yeah so what do you think this is you know we were talking of what is desirable where do you think we are today meanwhile for those who have answered um if there is any question so far we haven't really done much but if there's anything we can take it up karuna karan ji ma'am good morning ma'am good morning uh, is there any possibility to avoid conflict in the society ma'am because uh, as a larger group uh, we have a lot of differences among the people uh, in country like india So how to uh, balance this uh, conflict now? Yeah, so this is what we are working on, isn't it? That's what we are going to talk about: harmony in society. You've done the five-day online, right? So you yes, have yes. some yes. idea. Of, we have already discussed that in the five-day online. But here again, we'll be going through, you know, the harmony in society. Because if you look at the society, where does the society come from? Like we said, family is the training ground. Family is the building block for society so first yes. we start with family you know harmony in the family if we can live together as a small family then we can think of living together in a larger and larger family but even to live in the family together there are many members in a family so each one needs to first work on their harmony isn't it yes, so starting yes. with the individual then we can get to a harmonious family and as harmonious families come together you can have harmony in a society 
expressions in terms of language, food, and so many things may be different, but the feeling can be there. Feeling of relationship can be there. Mutual fulfillment of the relationship can be there. A common goal can be there. This common goal of understanding, isn't it? Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, if we see this uh, reflection, we have all different answers. <laughs> May, I'm not sure if everybody understood the question. Where are we today uh, was the question. So yes, I suppose we can see, you know, in some ways we can see in bits and pieces all three. Some areas you will, you know, Whatever we can see, we might see that, yes, people are living together with a common goal. But then we also see a large number of people having different goals. And then there, there is, you know, we'll also see the third category where there are conflicting goals and people are in opposition. So what is desirable for us that you can answer in the chat? Where would we like to be? Which of these three would we like to see? You can answer in the chat. Yeah, definitely we want the society. That's our goal. We want common goals. We want mutual fulfillment in our relationships. So we we'll look at all that. We we'll look at the common goal goal of the human being living in society. And we will look at the dimensions of the systems that we have to work on to achieve this human goal, how to go about it. And of course, in the next session, um, the scope of these systems will also be talked about. So if we look at the human goal, we can see that, you know, as an individual, we want happiness and we want it in continuity. That is what we aspire for. And if we work on the right understanding and the right feeling, if we can have this right understanding and have the right feeling in continuity, then we can be happy. And this is possible for every individual. So that can be a goal for the individual, the human goal as an individual. And if we see in the family, what do we want? We want happiness and prosperity in the family, isn't it? So the happiness we are working on with the right understanding and right feeling. And with that, we can also have prosperity in the family. We also want fearlessness in the society. We don't want fear, tension, trouble in the society. We want fearlessness. And we also want to live in coexistence with nature and existence. So all these four, you know, are they required? Are they desirable? Or can we leave something out? You can answer in the chat. Are all these four desirable? Are they required? Yeah. Nice, they are all required. Somebody mentioned in the chat who is going to take responsibility for changing the crowd into society. So there is no magic wand that somebody can shake and it's going to happen. Everyone has to take responsibility, each individual, starting with every individual. If we all work on ourselves to have the right understanding and right feeling, and work on our families, then slowly we can transform. If we achieve all these four, do you think anything else is required? All four are required, nothing else is required. Yes, true. So are we working for all these four in the family, in the society? You know, when we ask this question, who is going to change this? So are we working for it? Or are we waiting for that change to happen? <clears throat> yeah, 
many of us, many of us are honestly saying that no, we are not working on it, but we need to, isn't it? We need to work on it in the family, in the society. Some of us are trying, certainly. <coughs> what would be the sequence and the priority of effort? We are more or less answered that question already, but what would be our sequence of effort? How would we put the priority? Which would come first? We talked of one as at the individual level, two in the family, three in the society, four in nature. So what would be the order in which you would go about it? You can answer that also in the chat. What would come first? One or two or three or four? Where would you start from? Right. So we are able to see that, that we have to start from the individual. We have to start from one. Only then can we make it go forward. Starting from the individual, then having prosperity in the family with that right understanding, with that uh, understanding of the needs of the body, we can have prosperity in the family. And when there is prosperity in the family, is there going to be trust or mistrust in the society? Obviously, if every family is prosperous, are we going to have trust or mistrust in the society? Trust, true. So we can have then a society where there is fearlessness, there is trust. And of course, with all of these three, we, we can live in coexistence with nature. So um, we can take the reflection also on this, Priya. For this harmony in society, development of right understanding and right feeling is the most important. This is what is being said. We can give our opinion on that. And meanwhile, um, we can, you know, after the um, reflection has been attended to, we can take one more question. Gita ji's hand is raised. Didi, namaste, Didi. Sabiko, namaste. namaste. Didi, can we go to two slides before Didi? Uh, yeah, what is it? What is the question? Uh, Didi, can we have a differing goal in a family? Because differing goal, made, sorry, differing goal you have mentioned in the second part. My question is, together as a family, can we have a different Differing goals, not as, I mean, I can have a common goal as well as a differing goal. No, either we, our goal will be common or it will be differing, right? How can it be both? Didi, there are many goals, no, Didi. Sometimes the goal may be common. For example, a marriage where everybody will work together. So it will be a common goal for the entire family, two or three extended families. Sometimes... Within the family, within an individual, he may pursue to go for abroad. So that may be a differing goal. Some may not like going abroad. So yeah, we, uh, can, we can think of these as, you know, uh, small, small sub goals eventually leading to something, isn't it? We are mm -hmm. talking of a larger perspective, the mm -hmm. ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. What is it that you ultimately want? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. So if you see, we want to be happy, we want to be prosperous, that there is no denying. For everybody, mm. it is the same, isn't mm. it? Mm -hmm. How to go about it, that also, you know, we may be trying different things, but we'll be able to see that ultimately we have to understand this whole existence. We have to understand that there, there is already some harmony there. Mm -hmm. How we can live in harmony with all of this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we have if we don't have these goals for each one of us, mm. then somebody will, you know, try something different and they may not be able to um, live in harmony. Then there itself, the family, there is a problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. In the family, um, you know, are we going to able, be able to have this until and unless every individual eventually uh, gets to right understanding and right feeling. So we can start with one individual, but ultimately, mm. if we have this um, understanding 
and having the right feeling in each and every individual, then this process can become effortless, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So all those that small things that you are mentioning can be thought of as um, sub goals which are leading up to something bigger. But ultimately, we have to see that, that big picture and see what our ultimate goal is. Is it similar mm -hmm. or not? Mm -hmm. That's so we have to understand. Uh, that uh, uh, here I am just uh, I am not able to go with that Didi because uh, uh, three or four brothers may be staying together uh, and uh, one individual one young chap will be having a goal of going abroad and the elders may be against we'll, it. You know what? We'll take this question maybe uh, later because in the interest of time, mm -hmm. like okay, to okay, Didi. A lot of uh, thing, but we can uh, you know time sure. permitting, we can take up. Okay. More uh, Didi, last one, Didi. Uh, a small example for a conflicting goal, Didi. Conflicting goal, very simple, you know. I am, you know, I don't understand my goal or the goal that I can see is that in order to have this fearlessness in society, mm. I need to have right understanding and right feeling as an individual and work on prosperity for the family. Now, if somebody else feels that, um, you know, there is no need for uh, uh, to worry about society, as long as I have all the wealth for my family, that is my goal. So now I don't care about anybody else. I'm only bothered about myself. I want plenty of money and that's it. That's my only goal. Now, this would be a conflicting goal, isn't it? Now, I'm not trying to see, even for myself, I may not understand that with all the wealth also, mm -hmm. am I going to have happiness? Mm -hmm. Not having happiness. Mm -hmm. But we can discuss it later, I think. We'll go ahead. Oh, for now. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you, Didi. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, this we are all able to see this very clearly that developing the right understanding and right feeling is most important to have the harmony. So if you see today, are we able to achieve these four goals that we can see for ourselves? So what is the current state? Where are we today? So if you see, this, you know, this is an example of differing goals, conflicting goals. So if I have this assumption that money is everything, and if, you know, everybody is trying to work on this, then what's going to happen? People are having this obsession for consuming more and more, for more, they are, you know, greedy for more and more profit. They want more and more sensual pleasure. So naturally then, uh, you know, there is going to be a problem in the society and we are seeing the results of that. Similarly, you know, instead of working for producing, if we are accumulating by any means in a few people, then it is going to cause a problem. Few people have too much and some have none. And there is going to be unrest in society. Some people dominate. They exploit others. There is fear in the society that leads to bigger problems. And when we are trying to, you know, for our greed, consume more and more, we are taking from nature without really replenishing or without taking care of rightly utilizing what we have. And rather, we are exploiting nature. We are trying to do mastery over nature. So naturally there is resource depletion, pollution. All this we are able to see. It's nothing new, nothing, um, you know, that is uh, something different or what we are talking about. We can see this. Question is, when we are, you know, thinking about it, contemplating about this, how much of our imagination is about finding the solution? How much of our imagination is you know, working on achieving these four goals that you see on top in yellow. 
to change slowly from the current problems in society to moving towards a human society. And how much of our effort and our imagination is going into just working, you know, not even working, I should say, being worried about these problems, discussing these problems, complaining about the problems, and yet being a part of this. Because if we are not working on the solution, then we are, you know, part of the problem. So this we have to see for all of us and we have to explore this and, you know, spend time on that. That we have to make an effort for finding the solution. The solution is already there. We have to work on it. We have to make the effort for it. So how to go about it? There are some systems that we can work on, which can help to achieve our goals. This goal in the individual of right understanding and right feeling, which we are you know, trying to do through self-exploration. Prosperity in the family, all of those goals, these four goals that we talked about, so that we can work on some systems so that we can have an organized way in which this can be brought about. So if you look at this, how these goals are brought about, <coughs> when we work on education and sanskars, then we are working on right understanding and right feeling in every individual. So the first goal is taken care of. If we look at self-regulation, when we have the right understanding, we have the right feeling. With that right feeling, we have a feeling of self-regulation. We take responsibility for the body and we have health in the body. When we have health in the body, and we also, you know, when, when the body is healthy, the body can work for us. And now when we understand that for the body, there is some physical facility required, then we work on, you know, how to go about uh, producing that much physical facility. And if the body is healthy, we can put the body to good work to produce. So this, you know, production and work and the health and the self-regulation. Therefore, they go side by side. And that will lead to prosperity in the family. And of course, we are also working with nature. So we'll be living in coexistence with nature also. Then if you see justice, we already uh, talked of this, justice in human-human relationships. When there is justice in human relationships, there is mutual fulfillment. There is bound to be trust in the society, isn't it? And if you look at this uh, preservation, so if we see preservation, we are not only being just to human beings, we are also seeing our relationship with nature and we are ensuring that we preserve the nature. At least we leave it in a condition that it is and not make the condition worse, which is happening today with the resource depletion and all. So that preservation will take care of our fourth goal of coexisting with nature. And there is existence and storage. This is, you know, when we, uh, sorry, exchange and storage. When we um, work on exchanging with the idea not of greed, but of doing justice to you know every individual when we exchange with that purpose and that will take care of the prosperity for all and when we store it properly then we are rightly utilizing what we have so all in all when there is prosperity because of this then every family being prosperous, there will be no need for fear in the society. So there is fearlessness and trust in society. And we can uh, take uh, the reflection here. Bhaiya, we have a reflection here. Ji. So can we see this mapping of human goals to the dimensions in society? 
are we able to see that this these dimensions can help us achieve these goals while we are doing that we we'll take maybe one odd question rinda ji Uh, namaste didi uh, by mistake i have raised my hand oh okay. neel kumar ji yeah good morning i have a small question yes why have you given uh, those circles some circles are given in dark red color and some of them are like uh, light ah. so what is the meaning of that <laughs> yes you... here yes. please so um the main uh you know goal that the dimension is working on is given in the bright color that dimmed thing is indirectly it is also helping with something else so like if you see this you know health and self regulation and production and work so that is um helping the prosperity in the family because with the healthy body you know taking care of the health of the body and with that with the understanding of how much the body requires producing that much so that is taking care of prosperity in the family but at the same time we are also in that process working with nature so coexistence with nature is also indirectly being accomplished so therefore that paint thing Does okay that so uh, say two is the uh, dominant Goal yes. and four is a resourceful goal. Can we take it like that? It is also satisfied. That goal is yes, also yes. Yes, yes. It is to, also getting an, satisfied. Yes. Ah, uh, to an extent. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Same way, this last one, when we are rightly utilizing the um, um, physical facility, exchanging with um, not just for greed, but taking care of the fulfillment of the other human being also, the prosperity of the other person also. and uh, storing for not to accumulate but to uh, be rightly utilizing it then it is going to help with prosperity in every family largely but also if you see that coexistence with nature because we are rightly utilizing what there is we are not just accumulating more and more at any cost so we are also taking care of uh, nature and uh, before that actually we we can put that also there we are also um, whenever there is prosperity in the family then there is no um, no disparity in the society there is no um, fear in the society there is no uh, you know it's not that too much of physical facility is with one person and very little with another when that disparity is there then there is more of exploitation in the society there is fear and so on so um that part also gets taken care of when there is um prosperity in the family another small query is that you see we have uh, one two three four four goals written on top mm -hmm. uh, in that uh, right understanding and right feeling prosperity and the last one coexistence that we can understand they go in line whereas uh, uh, fearlessness or trust within brackets that is a feeling so how do you uh, weigh them in the or rather compare them in the same sequence that is also a confusion which i had when i conducted the course can you uh, please throw some light upon this yeah so if you think of in the society when would there be harmony in a society when there is a lot of disparity exploitation um greed those kind of things or where everybody can have sufficient everybody has understanding and feeling and everybody is prosperous so when that situation is there correct correct then there is there will be trust between the people so basically that is what is being said okay thank you thank you so now going into just a little bit uh, more in detail about these dimensions so the education when we say education sanskar so that is uh, talking about 
Education meaning developing the right understanding of the harmony at all these levels. From the individual level to the family, to the society, to the nature and existence, because we are not isolated, right? We are interconnected with all these. We, we live in all these levels. So we need to understand the harmony at all these levels. So that part can be done with the education. When it comes to sanskar, how to go about actually living with this? So any preparation that is required, any practice that is required for being able to live in harmony, that commitment. So all of this is included in the sanskar. So this would also include whatever skills we need to learn, whatever technology we need to take the help of for living in harmony at all the levels. So this will, you know, the education and the sanskar has to do with the understanding and with the skills and how to go about living with that. That takes care of, you know, that goal. And ultimately with that, what we are looking for is that transformation. Transformation that will start from the individual, every individual who is going through this process to try to understand that personal transformation, all of the individuals, you know, each individual, when they transform personally, these individuals, when they come together, that's what forms the society. So ultimately the whole society gets transformed. The whole society, if it has individuals with the right understanding, then, you know, things are more smooth. Like so many people say that, you know, when we are uh, working with the UHV team, uh, things are very relaxed and very comfortable and we feel very good. But then when we go out into the world, again, there is so much conflict. But what if we could have a society that could be, you know, really understanding and be all inclusive without trying to separate somebody or, you know, be uh, differentiating anybody. So we can work for a society, uh, you know, a transformed society like that. Similarly, if you look at the second uh, goal, the health and self-regulation part. So when we have the right understanding, we have the right feeling. And with that right feeling, we also have feeling of responsibility for the body. To nurture the body, to protect the body, to rightly utilize it. And when we do that, when we take care of the body like that, there is health in the body. So what do we mean by health in the body? The body will act according to the self. The body is not damaged. It is able to you know, take the instructions and do the things that we want the body to do. And all the parts of the body are in harmony. In fact, we already spoke of this. The body parts were already in harmony. But somewhere when we don't understand that, we keep disrupting the harmony. Now with right understanding, we allow the body to remain in harmony. <coughs> and at the same time, we also talked about, you know, um, as part of this goal, how to recognize what is needed as physical facility. Because wherever the body comes in, there is requirement of physical facility. So what is needed, how much is needed to be able to see that this is limited and then how to go about producing it will come in the next phase. But so far we were talking about the health in the body due to the, with the self-regulation. So when this healthy body can you know work for the production, then there can be prosperity in the family. And like we mentioned, we can be working with nature. So there will be coexistence. We will be taking care of that goal also. So the program for health and self-regulation, we talked about this. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but just that this one, one A, one B, that can be our priority that can take care of health in the body. Two, 
that is medicine we can take from time to time whenever the body goes into some temporary disharmony but our effort can be towards focusing on 1a and 1b so that there is minimal disharmony in the body and of course three is you know an option that is uh, i you know probably we should think of as last resort where you know we are depending the body has to sort of um, is it's not able to perform certain functions and therefore we have to depend on a drug or machine to take care of the body function so this is just a proposal this is one way of uh, you know we, how we can regulate um, or have this feeling of responsibility towards the body and uh, take care of the body and keep it in good health coming to the third you know dimension production and work if you see what is work work is the labor that we are doing with the rest of nature as human beings what work we do with the rest of nature that is work and production is when we do this work what is produced from that the physical facility that we get from that that we are talking of as production so with that what's going to happen again there will be prosperity in the family and of course because we are working with nature so we are taking care of the coexistence also with nature we are part of that now in this you know one question is what to produce so we can see that you know physical facility is required for what for nurturing protecting and rightly utilizing the body so we can produce those things which will help in this rather than producing you know things that are not really required for the body but you know just uh, for accumulating wealth growing you know like how we um we may be growing all kinds of things we may be focusing on producing all kinds of things which are not really beneficial for the health of the body not really beneficial for um uh, you know anybody in society but just so that we personally get some physical facility out of it uh, in terms of money or wealth that would be again a conflicting goal because we have not understood the four goals then so what to produce to produce something that is required uh, for nurturing protecting and rightly utilizing the body that required physical facility and then if we we look at how to produce that also if we don't have the understanding we may be using all kinds of chemicals fertilizers things um in trying to you know get maximum produce but how to produce in a way that is firstly friendly for the environment eco friendly which means that we don't disrupt nature in the process so we can use cyclic processes that are mutually enriching nature benefits us but at the same time we are enriching nature also in the process and we'll talk about that in the next slide we also need to look at is it people friendly is it ensuring justice to the people so people who are helping in producing these things are we doing justice to them whatever work they are doing are they being given sufficient physical facility you know so that they can also take care of the prosperity in their family so all of this is something to be looked at there are few hands raised maybe i'll uh, take a quick question after this next slide so when we are talking of cyclic you know if we see in nature this is already there in place we just have to understand it and try to be a part of it so if you see you know soil water and air this is the material order and if you look at plants the bio order 
how are they interacting with each other so the plants take things from the soil they take water they use the air and they grow so the you know they are getting enriched by the soil water air in the material order now when these plants they die they decay or even you know every season with the season change the leaves will fall on the ground when these leaves fall on the ground they are enriching the soil so this process is a cyclic process both are enriching one another each unit in the process is enriched now if you add the animals and birds in this you will find that they are also enriching so the animals and birds are using the plants as food the birds are uh, using the trees as you know to make their nests to live in and so on and these animals and birds also with their droppings um you know it is enriching the soil again with their uh, um um you know when they decay then it is again you know all that is going back to the soil it is enriching the soil and it is also enriching the plants the same way you know when it goes into the soil it is helping the plants also survive so all of these units are um enriching each other except for the human being if you look at the human being then we are the ones who are creating lot of problem of course we'll talk more about this in nature but uh, just because we are talking about this production and work part of it so human beings have this uh, natural acceptance to be fulfilling but when we don't understand that we don't understand the harmony that is there then we keep disrupting it so now when we understand it then we live according to it and we can make you know all our processes cyclic and mutually enriching so um if i can take a question here maybe um sandhya ji did you have a question namaste didi namaste didi the uh, the question was with the slide education and sanskar uh till now just check uh, what i understood rightly or not uh till now what we were seeing sanskar is something which keeps on changing with respect to circumstances and that times uh, pre conditioning so in that dimensions uh, how education and sanskar is correlated i would like to yeah. uh, just know more about it yeah so a lot of sanskar is basically you know all this that is going on in my imagination you can say the sum total of that what impact it has right how i live with that that becomes my sanskar now when i don't verify things i may have heard things i may have you know seen things and so on um then we have uh, um you know some some sanskar from that but if we work on trying to um, verify things when we have the right understanding then we can change that sanskar make it a sanskar in line with the natural acceptance so then we can have the right sanskars then we can um uh, you know make those habits which are right for us we can uh, have that uh, you know all our imagination slowly coming in in line with the natural acceptance and accordingly it comes in our living then that so becomes the, a sanskar that education was more about aligning right sanskar uh, am i uh, understood rightly the education is the understanding part with mm-hmm. that understanding we live a certain way how okay. we live that becomes that is our sanskar isn't it right so aligning right sanskar uh, with the help of education is that the dimension yes. is there okay yes you can see that okay yeah thank you didi 
Thank you. This reflection is there in front of you, so you can answer it. How many trees can we plant in a lifetime? And um, if I, oops, sorry. We can see that in nature, so many things are happening. We can also do something. We can also um, add to the, you know, when we understand how to fulfill nature, simple thing like planting trees. That is something that is easy for all of us to do. And we have seen, majority of us are able to see that we can transplant, uh, we can uh, plant certainly more than 10 trees. Some of us have answered up to five. Why are we being so stingy? Why can't we do more than that? If we even plant one, one tree on our birthdays, how many trees will that be? So um, maybe we can think about it. We can also be enriching for nature. So we are getting so much from nature. We can also try to um, enrich nature in some ways. Yes. Then we look at you know uh, the fourth uh, dimension or the fourth system that we're talking of justice. We talked of this yesterday. Justice uh, in terms of human-human relationships, how to fulfill the relationships, and how to have mutual happiness with all. So obviously, if we are all living with relationship, with mutual happiness, then there is no need for, you know, policemen and um, the legal system trying to solve problems because we can have harmonious relationships with everyone in the society. Then there can be this third goal of ours can be accomplished. And um, what happened? Yeah, and then there is 4D preservation that we already spoke of that we can, when we are, uh, you know, uh, working with nature and all that, we are also preserve nature. So do justice, not just to human beings, but also, we wouldn't call it justice to nature, but basically preserve nature also. And then we already spoke of um, exchange and storage. So with all of these dimensions, we can work on achieving our goals for the society. So um, this was about the justice uh, that we spoke of yesterday. I don't want to go into it again. We already discussed that. When it comes to preservation, so seeing that relationship, not just with human beings, but also with the rest of nature, seeing that you know our prosperity is linked to the nature. Why to talk of prosperity? Even the survival of the body is linked to nature. The very air we breathe is you know um, put out by the these trees and so many things if you see water these are basic you know necessities for survival of the human body so we are using all of these we definitely have a relationship with nature we need to understand it and when we understand it and we are fulfilling for nature then we will you know also enrich nature we will protect the nature we will rightly utilize whatever we have as a gift in nature. So our prosperity as a human being is also directly linked with the nature. So we need to also take care of nature. Have, think about mutual enrichment here also. If we see this, you know, what is fundamental? Enrichment, protection, or right utilization of nature. We can see that right utilization of nature is important. Of course, all are important, but 
if we keep trying to enrich but then we are just wasting we are uh, you know not protecting what there is then again there is a problem so nature will take care of itself all we have to really focus on is the right utilization if you see in a forest we are not going there and putting water but you see the variety of trees and plants and everything that is there by virtue of nature it is happening we are not doing anything much in it but if we keep you know taking more and more than we need and uh, sort of uh, for greed doing that then it will be hard for nature to um, be able to sustain so like this this you know how many trees can you plant in your lifetime we ask this question so if you see uh, this somebody has done this uh, study and you know has found that the wood of four full green grown trees is sufficient for a person's needs from birth to death including you know what you need for the funeral pyre so if four full grown trees is enough for one person's needs then uh, you know that is how much each individual human being needs but each individual human being can plant how many trees we just spoke of you know in your whole lifetime you can plant so many trees even if you plant one a year there are so many trees you can plant so you can definitely think of enriching nature yeah so there is this example of professor parmeshwar rao of imanchali village who has planted 5000 trees in each of the 100 villages near where he lives and so we say you know who is going to take responsibility see this one man has made a difference by taking some responsibility so imagine if we all became responsible how much could happen and then coming to the last uh, system or last dimension that we were speaking of the exchange and the storage exchange of physical facility with view of mutual fulfillment so when we exchange with money you know or whatever exchange earlier we used to do exchange even without money now everything has become related to physical money so um mutual fulfillment should be our goal not that let me get the maximum money for this so when we are have not having clear understanding we may be having this obsession for profit and exploitation but when we have the right understanding we can see that just as i want to be prosperous the other also wants to be prosperous so i will take care of that and um, do justice to the other person exchange with the view of mutual fulfillment and when i go to store the physical facility i will store again with the idea of mutual fulfillment that means when i store i am you know seeing that it is rightly utilized i have more than enough then i will use what i need and i will share what is extra not that i will keep accumulating not that i will try to uh, make the maximum profit out of it so with that then the goal of prosperity is also met and when everybody is prosperous definitely you know there will be uh, harmony in the society so like that all of these dimensions when we work on them then uh, it can lead to this uh, accomplishment of the goals that we had so <coughs> if you can see education and sanskar this process has started that you know we are working on this and a lot of uh, you know um, work has been done a lot of results are coming in some work on health and self regulation is going on but eventually we need to work on all of these dimensions to try and help accomplish these goals yeah so um i'll before i sum up maybe i'll take a, a couple of questions 
Sunita ji. Did you have a question? No, madam, that has been answered in the okay. content. Thank you, madam. Vinay ji. Yeah, good morning, uh, Sharmila Didi. Good morning. Uh, when uh, we are talking about sanskar, so uh, in present uh, coexistence, we can understand the sources from which we have got the sanskar. But many times we see that uh, there are some sanskars which uh, we can't find the source, uh, at least in this present uh, uh, coexistence. So uh, can we uh, uh, see, uh, identify what are the different sources of sanskars? Can we have that clarity? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, what would be most beneficial for us is to work on having the right sanskar rather than trying to find out from where my sanskar has come. Because to trace that back, you know, in this journey, whatever I can know, I will know from my childhood till now. What if the self was on another journey earlier and acquired some sanskar from there? So I think, you know, our focus should be on how to have the right sanskar, how to have sanskars that will be in line with the natural acceptance. So when we do that, we are able to see very clearly what our natural acceptance is. And if we are paying attention to our imagination, then we can guide our imagination with the help of this natural acceptance so that we are developing the right sanskars. I think that should be our focus. Yeah, true. But uh, sometimes it, uh, uh, I found that uh, many of the sanskars are easy to uh, eliminate uh, by looking at our natural acceptance, but mm -hmm. there are some sanskars which uh, keep on coming again and again. Yeah. So uh, that is quite disturbing. That, uh, yes. Even after working, so, we yeah. find that they are coming again. How yes. to work with that? Yeah. So when the there are deep-rooted sanskars which are leading to, uh, you know, our behavior and, um, you know, something that we can see is not in line with our natural acceptance. Then even if we knew where it has come from, that will not help change the things. What will help change is to keep observing. So as our capacity to observe becomes better and better in that observation of the imagination, seeing the thoughts, seeing the feeling, checking if it is in line with natural acceptance or not, as we keep doing that exploration and we keep observing, we are able to see more and more subtle things. And as that capacity grows, as we keep doing the practice, we are able to do more and more. Eventually, we'll be able to see, many, many of us can see many of the sanskars, which are leading to this repetitive, you know, again, falling into that groove of the same feeling and the, the same kind of thoughts and all. So the key would be to keep on uh, working on ourselves, exploring more, um, keep observing. And I think let's not get impatient. It will happen. It takes time. Some of these things are very, very deep rooted. They may have been there for many, many lifetimes. So, um, you know, if we just keep working on it, things will start surfacing slowly. And the good thing is the moment we see it, the moment we observe it, not analyze it, not talk about it, not think about it, but the moment we observe it, it seems to start becoming weaker and then eventually drops off. So it will happen. We just have to stay on that path. Yeah, yeah. true, true. true. So uh, we should wait uh, until uh, we get that change. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. So maybe we'll take one more Didi? question. Ji, ask? Ji, ji. Anji. Didi, can you please go to the previous slide just before this? Oh, just one moment. Oh. Yes. Anji. Uh, Didi, I wanted to know about this one, two, four, which is written under uh, systems and dimensions. One, two, four? One, two. Didi, education sanskar is one. Yeah, we just discussed it, no? Yeah. So, Didi, is it matching what is written for human goals? I, I just had a doubt for that. Yeah, yeah. This okay. is what we were saying, right? Yeah. With education and sanskar, 
when mm -hmm. we have the education education meaning the right understanding mm -hmm. <coughs> understanding the harmony at all the levels so this right understanding and right feeling and sanskar the ability to live with that right understanding and right feeling now, all of this is contributing to happiness in the individual our goal for happiness in the individual we can be happy if we have the right understanding and right feeling within the self so with the education and sanskar this is meeting our goal number 1 yeah. isn't it yes it is similarly we talked of this right now right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. i understood now so. yeah thank you okay. all right so um we'll go to the sum up so we said that a society is made up of families living together in a relationship of mutual fulfillment they have a common goal and what is that common goal that we want to have you know right understanding and right feeling of happiness in every individual so it's not just about me it is not just about my immediate family related to me you know by body or blood relatives or what we call but right understanding and right feeling in every individual prosperity in every family fearlessness and trust in society and coexistence or living with mutual fulfillment in nature and existence so when we have the right understanding then we can you know see that this you know a society like that which has families like that that are mutually fulfilling for one another then all these four goals will be met quite easily so that this would be a common goal that we could all have as a society now for that society the family is the basic unit so there can be you know groups of families groups of families can come together to form a larger unit like a village family groups of village families can come together to form a town family and so on so that that circle of that small nuclear family that we associate with that circle can get bigger and bigger and bigger after all uh, the real difference is just that now we are able to see our relationship with them at the level of the self if you see you can see the relationship with all so that circle of our family becomes bigger and bigger and here every individual is responsible for themselves is self disciplined self motivated self organized having these common values and participating in that larger order to move towards that common goal to have everybody see this common goal and if we see that when we participate when every family in the society participates in these five dimensions or the social systems that we are calling then the human goal can be fulfilled for all at a much faster pace if only few people are trying then it is going to take much longer if more and more of us are able to understand this and are able to participate in this then we can reach this goal a lot faster the whole idea is to go not just you know uh, increase the circle up to the country or up to one hemisphere to the whole world the world family order and to be able to do this in continuity not just now but uh, you know many many years after we are gone with the next generation and the generation after and the generation after it can continue so a system that can be put in place that can continue right now yes there are problems right now you know we have this assumption that the human being is body so we are trying to get happiness through the body through the various senses we are trying to get happiness through feeling from others so when we think we are the body we keep trying to accumulate more and more physical facility we keep trying to dominate the other we keep trying to exploit the other 
but that's why we need all this you know we need the right understanding so um, this is what uh, uh, we wanted to talk about today there are a few questions maybe some of you can um, you know we can take i think there is a few minutes we'll take a couple of questions before it will be time for the quiz so didi this is shashikant gosavi ji uh just recently i came to know regarding the uh, continuous decline in the happiness index in spite of uh, very good uh, progress in terms of gdp mm -hmm. uh, the biggest challenge is not only in front of india but world is huge population growth mm -hmm. and uh, how this can be overcome i mean uh, fearless society is possible when there is a maybe a, 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 countable or controllable population now about this there may be a debate so what is right continuing with the freedom to populate or adopt measures to control it yeah so i think you know when we have the right understanding then we will live responsibly but population is the main problem i wouldn't say that because today you know if you see in countries you know the so called developed countries where the population is actually declining and in fact even in india it is no longer progressing at that rapid rate if you go through the rates so in even in the countries where there is a decline the birth rate has declined yet is there happiness is there prosperity so that that question if we come to then we'll see that you know it's not just the population if you know people if we have you know spreading awareness if we have the right understanding in every individual that population program uh, uh, problem will not come up because every person will take responsibility isn't it so i think our focus should be on the solution otherwise if we keep trying to isolate pockets or you know problems and try to work with one problem we might be you know disrupting something else so we have to look at the holistic solution so when we look at it holistically we can see that you know when we have the right understanding we work with our own responsibility as a self organized person and uh, we we take responsibility for all our actions isn't it yeah maybe the few of us who are uh learning about all these things maybe now around 70000 uh, faculty members must be educated and uh, maybe they will pass this information to another at least uh, 20 number of candidates per person so, i probably, will give you a simple example okay. ha, ha. in the uhv team 78 some workshops have happened yeah over a period, from march 2020 i think this has been happening and um these workshops have been going on every week one one week english one week hindi how is it happening is anybody being forced nobody is being forced all are working as volunteers all are working in a self organized way does somebody have to remind anybody that look 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 you have a session from this time to this time no everybody is taking responsibility everybody is doing this what are they getting out of it any physical facility nothing so with the understanding a lot can happen so that participation when it is there when everybody works in a self organized way a lot can happen yeah yeah so unfortunately we are almost out of time i'll just wanted to have somebody um, talk about uh, i think this more or less got answered can we ever achieve such a society we can work on it uh, would anybody like to answer this why have we not included health as one of the human goals uh nirmala ji good morning ma'am uh, why we are not including health as one of the human goal it is a mandatory thing it may not be health it should be one responsibility Can there, you speak a little louder? There is not a background noise here. I can't hear. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is it uh, audible now, ma'am? 
हां इफ यू कैन जस्ट स्पीक क्लोज टू द माइक या या हेल्थ मींस व्हाई वी आर नॉट इंक्लूडिंग हेल्थ एज़ वन ऑफ द ह्यूमन बॉडीज इट इज अ बेसिक रिस्पांसिबिलिटी ऑफ एवरी ह्यूमन बीइंग in one family if i am uh, healthy means then i cannot depend on others also we cannot make others to uh, uh, help for us the uh, health wise so health is one of the important mandatory uh, thing that every one uh, should take care it is need not be included as a human goal i accept that it's a basic thing yes yeah if we see that you know um, when we are talking about uh, prosperity in the family when we are talking about the right understanding so when we have the right understanding then with that understanding we also take responsibility for the body and yes. if we see you know the self is the one that is central yes so with that you know uh, the self taking charge then with that right understanding it follows yes. that the body will be yes i can get yes yes Helpless without help, nothing is possible. Whatever we are discussing now, how can we implement everything to the society? First, we should be. Uh, we will say in uh, Tamil, ma'am, "Suvari lamal sitram varai muriyadi." Like that. Yeah. First, uh, uh, yeah, in Tamil, they will say, "Ma'am." Uh, so, health is a prime requirement. That even yeah. uh, in our uh, family also, we should make every member of the family to realize about the importance of health rather than giving importance to the taste. or unhealthy foods so even though it is attracting us we should make them realize that take some time but it is mandatory requirement so that we cannot pay amount to the first doctors right yeah when we talk of health we should be looking at both yes ma'am yes, ma health yes, ma in the self and health in the body yes ma'am yes ma'am uh, so only when lot we... of things are available even in our kitchen itself you know ma'am that uh, whatever sizes we are uh, taking we are not considering those things ma'am because they are very cheap and we are not bothering see in covid ma'am some simple points they are informing us so that we cannot go to the death state but we are not considering that because we are getting everything as cheap we are not bothering but we are paying lakhs and lakhs to the uh, hospital and uh, we are ultimately there is no use of that right yeah. yeah so we have to take uh, serious uh, issues uh, towards maintaining our health in considering yes. uh, prime things in our uh, uh, day to day kitchen uh, uh, things whatever we are adding uh, flavor to the uh, family health we have to maintain not for attraction not for uh, yes. taste yes, yes ma'am that uh, every lady as uh, as our family uh, in charge we are uh, taking care of the health of the family not only ourselves so yes. we have to be very much uh, uh, serious in this yeah nirmala ji we are out of time thank you thank you yeah, we'll have to stop yes ma'am thank you thank you um uh, yeah i will say in one line uh, <laughs> the head yes yes uh pavai ji you were saying just uh, quickly yeah, yeah. can do it yeah 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 one line see why we are not including as a separate human goal is it is a part of uh, the happiness of a human being yes. so the four right. levels in the human level itself this health is also included yes correct yeah. right okay thank you thank you